So there's the uh, inside entrance with the uh, ticket booth. Like that might be original here, these uh, stalls for the blacksmith. And, uh, now they take you back to the actual site. Constitution here. And uh, here's the actual site. Close to each other. As you look around, you can see the gunfighters, just as they stood on October 26th, 1881. The four cowboys have gathered here in this narrow, vacant lot behind the O.K. Corral. Their best gunman, Frank McLowry, stands with his brother, Tom. Ike Clanton, leader of the powerful Clanton gang, is accompanied by his kid brother, Billy. They hope to confront Doc Holliday, who lives nearby in Fly's boarding house. Wyatt Earp and his brothers, Virgil and Morgan Earp, have just arrived, joined by Wyatt's good friend, Doc Holliday. Virgil Earp, Tombstone's chief of police, orders the cowboys to put up their hands. In the next few seconds, nearly 30 shots will be fired. Both McLowry brothers and 19-year-old Billy Clinton will be killed. Virgil and Morgan Earp will fall badly wounded. This bloody gunfight at the OK Corral was the climax of a bitter and often lawless struggle for political and economic control of Tombstone's riches. On one side were the local ranchers and cowhands, mostly Southern Democrats, who had long controlled Arizona territory. More than a hundred of these so-called cowboys had banded together under the leadership of the Clanton family. Many blamed the cowboys for every stage robbery and stolen cow in the territory. But Johnny Dean, sheriff of Cochise County, gave them legal protection. And the Tombstone Nugget newspaper, published by one of Bean's deputies, defended the cowboys in print. On the other side were mining officials and local businessmen backed by wealthy eastern investors. Their spokesman was John Clum, Tombstone's Republican mayor and the editor of the Tombstone Epitaph newspaper. The businessmen's profits depended upon capturing control of Tombstone, but the cowboys stood in their way. So Mayor Clum chose the herbs to drive the cowboys out of Tombstone. The trouble began when cowboy curly Bill Brocious shot and killed Marshal Fred White, a friend of the Earps. This incident was followed by a year of stagecoach robberies, cattle wrestling, pistol whippings, and arrests, voter fraud, and even romantic rivalries. Whenever the Earps arrested a disorderly cowboy, they would hit him over the head with the barrel of a revolver. The cowboys claimed this tactic called buffaloing was simply police brutality. But one day, Wyatt tracked six stolen army mules straight to Frank McLowry's ranch. On another occasion, Wyatt caught cowboy Billy Clinton with one of Wyatt's missing horses. Then Sheriff Bean arrested Doc Holliday for robbing the Tombstone stage and killing the driver. Bean had tricked Doc's girlfriend, Big Nose Kate, into making the false accusation. Both sides were spoiling for a showdown. 
On the morning of October 26th, 1881, heavily armed cowboy Ike Clanton wandered the streets of Tombstone, threatening to kill the Earps or Doc on sight. Virgil Earp arrested Ike for illegally carrying a gun in town, buffaloed him, and dragged him to court. Wyatt Earp then caught Tom McLowry outside the courtroom and buffaloed him as well. The cowboys, now fighting mad, gathered behind the OK Corral. The Earps headed for the Corral. Doc Holliday joined them. Sheriff Bean tried to stop them, claiming he had disarmed the cowboys, but they walked on into this vacant lot where you see them standing now. Suddenly, Wyatt cries out, You cowboys have been looking for a fight. Now you can have it. Boys, throw up your hands. I want your gun. Don't shoot me. I don't want to fight. I haven't got anything. Oh, I don't mean that. I've got to disarm you. <laughs> This fight has commenced. Right? Either fight or get away. Why? I right, got you now, Doc. Good one if you have. Shot right through. I got him. Why? I will have to arrest. I won't be arrested today, Johnny. You just you told me they were disarmed. Frank McLowry, dead. Tom McLowry, dead. 19-year-old Billy Clanton, dead. Morgan Hurt, severe shoulder wound. Virgil Hurt, shot in the leg. Doc Holliday, slight hip wound. Wyatt Hurt, unhurt. We should get an old-timey photographer. <laughs> Pretty proud when you got brown stuff, I guess. Patty? I believe I said. Howdy, folks! Howdy! Howdy. 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 Please, at no point, attempt to pull a gun out of a cowboy's holster. Do not ask us to point a gun at your loved one's head for a funny photo. <laughs> not gonna happen. One last piece of business that y'all need to know before we get this thing started is this. It's an audience participation show.
his brother White's birthday. Now, in 1887, the year this whole town began to shake apart, the two main causes of this gunfight died hundreds of miles away from one another. That summer, putting together a new gang in northern Arizona, Ike Clayton was shot and killed by a mail order detective. Not long after that, a lifetime of drinking, smoking, and generally bad decisions, tuberculosis caught up with yours truly in Colorado. I do not care to talk about it. <laughs> Wyatt, he was the last man standing after all this. He'd spent the rest of his days trapped. Wyatt went from Iowa to Alaska, to Jazz Age Hollywood looking for another tombstone and a chance to make things right. He never would find it. When he died in Los Angeles in 1929, just ahead of his 81st birthday, his last words, suppose, suppose. And that, folks, is our show. We hope you enjoy. So this is looking down the main street here in Tombstone. Uh, OK Corral is just off to the right. And uh, they've uh, closed off for a good reason, the, the main drag here. Although cars come drive across at the intersections. But uh, looks like a fair amount has been preserved. <laughs> 